Um, I'd like to thank BioIC for allowing me to present today and also thank you, thank you to the, uh, the other presenters for their fantastic talks. So I hope everybody is well and warm. Um, I am the production manager at Scott Bio, who are an SME based just outside of Glasgow. And we use IB to manufacture clean label products from spirulina cyanobacteria. So in my talk today, I'm gonna to give you a brief insight as to what we do as a company and how we've developed over the last five years. Um, and importantly, I'm gonna describe the sustainable platform that we're pioneering to produce Scott Bio Blue, which is our currently our, our main product, and how we intend to use this platform to manufacture a whole portfolio of, of a clean, traceable foods, food ingredients, and therapeutics. Um, and also going to delve into some of the, the interesting science we're doing uh, and how academic collaboration has been uh, really has been a, a major factor for us in the growth of the company. Next slide, please. So in a nutshell, we currently grow spirulina in internally lit photobioreactors to produce high quality natural colorants, foods and therapeutics for industry, um, including our core product, which is Scott Bio Blue, which uh, I mentioned earlier and is shown in this picture, nicely formulated into ingredients for, for, for cupcakes. So our unique manufacturing system means that we can grow spirulina uh, in a clean, controlled manner all year round using carefully sourced raw materials, um, which provides the quality and the traceability that we've, we believe is required for, by the food and pharma industries. So our vision is to use this platform that we're developing to target various global markets by being able to set up this platform anywhere in the world, uh, thus improving the, the quality of, of food and therapeutics, um, the sustainability of these products and the security of business to business production lines. While as we can move the factories closer to where they're needed, we can also shorten some of these supply chains as well. Next slide, please. So a brief sort of history about um, about Scott Bio. So we started in 2014 as a spin-off of a PhD project at Newcastle Uni. Um, we then financed our first PhD, which was to demonstrate proof concept that phycocyanin could be produced from spirulina using these photobioreactors. Um, and, and that PhD student has now gone on to become our, our CTO. And then we've flourished um, since then. We now have over 25 employees spread at two sites in Scotland. And some of the key milestones for us have been um, three successful investment rounds. Um, we've co-funded multiple PhD studentships uh, with many of the students now working full time with us. And we, we've opened a new production facility in Lockerbie which is successfully culturing spirulina in a 50,000 litre photobioreactor, which you can see uh, the internal lightings of that in, in, in this picture here. Um, and we also have patents and trade agreements in multiple continents uh, across the globe. And it, it seems that both investors and clients are, are very much appear to be buying into our strategy and, and vision as a company. Next slide, please. So, for me, I think there's been kind of three main reasons why we've, we've been able to flourish and, and our success to date. So first one being we've, we've, we were keen to establish a vibrant group of really young, talented scientists um, with, with different but complementary specialisms. Uh, and importantly, they were all, we're all fully on board with, with the company ethos and, and, and vision. And we are supported by a fantastic management team and a really experienced board of directors with backgrounds spanning various manufacturing industries, such as food and pharma. Um, secondly, as, I, as I've mentioned, we've created this culture of collaboration. So we currently have 10 active collaborative projects ongoing. Uh, and to last count, that was with five different academic institutions in the UK. Uh, and that's been crucial for us uh, to, to allow us to access new disruptive technologies, expertise, uh, and, and talented people, um, some of which we've, we've pinched to work for us, fortunately. Um, so for example, um, quite an interesting little project, we're, we're looking at microalgal metabolomics with Dr. Carl Burgess at the University of, the University of Edinburgh, 
um, who is presenting tomorrow. Um, additionally, we've hosted work experience students, internships, uh, and we very soon have our second knowledge transfer partnership associate starting, um, sort of demonstrating the synergy that we, we have with academia and how it's been fundamental to what we do. Um, thirdly, we, we've been pioneering this biotechnological approach, which has really put us in a prime position to exploit many emerging, emerging markets, um, while also allowing us to provide solutions to various environmental and societal issues. Next slide, please. So the theme of this session um, is industrial biotechnology and health within the backdrop of, of making Scotland net zero, carbon zero by 2045. So we fully believe that the microalgal biofinery approach we're, we're using can help support green growth, provide future ready natural foods, food ingredients, as well as bioactive molecules for pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, and cosmeceuticals as well. And then these products can provide novel alternatives to, to meat and dairy products, such as, as egg, egg bite replacements and, and, in, and fake meat products, uh, as well as replacing some petroleum derived synthetic colorants and, and medical excipients as well. Next slide, please. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with the my, um, microalgal biorefinery concept, the aim is to master the, the, the biological and ecological parameters to produce green, sustainable biofuels, products and, and energy as well. Um, the initial concept, which was probably conceived 25, 30 years ago, was very heavily focused on producing biofuels and, and there was fairly limited success um, in, in this a, um, approach with just focusing on, on the fuels themselves. At Scott Bio, we are specifically interested in fractionating the algal biomass into a portfolio of bioproducts, um, thereby utilising all of the biomass and helping us move towards a circular economy. Um, if I can have the next picture, please. So if we explore the concept a little further, um, we disrupt cells and then the different components are successfully, uh, successively extracted and purified into to higher value products. And then that's the, the basic uh, premise of the, of the, of the concept. Um, the beauty of this platform is that there are opportunities to further improve it. Um, for example, if you can find ways of incorporating waste CO2 into your, into your bio refinery, um, you can, or you can also recover nutrients from waste water or waste products. This can reduce the operating costs of the, of the, of the bio refinery. But it also helps boost the green credentials um, of other industries as well. Uh, and a nice little example of that, we've, I've been working on a project where we've been taking pot ale from the whiskey industry and using that as a, as a feedstock to culture um, microalgae on to produce some high value pigments. Um, so the photobioreactors and the processing equipment also for these can be coupled to renewable energy sources, which again offers more environmental and, and economic benefits to the, to the process in general. So at Scott Bio, we are pioneering new photobioreactor designs, harvesting techniques and, and pro green processing methods as well, which allow us to overcome some of the barriers which so far proved quite prohibitive to the utilisation of this platform um, in the past. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the key objectives for profitability of the microalgal biorefinery is commercialisation of, of the co-products. So this is achieved by identifying and isolating high value or, or bioactive compounds, um, combined with also using for us food safe, sustainable processes, for integrated extraction of, of these co-products. So my primary objective during my time at Scott Bio um, ha has been finding ways to, to extract these other co-products along with the, the Scott Bio Blue. Um, and in this sense, the, the microalgal biomass that we can we produce can be valorized from a fairly low value bulk feed or fuel commodity to a high value, low volume products such as novel food ingredients, pharmaceuticals and, and nutraceuticals. Um, if you can have the next two images, please. 
Thank you. Um, so in, in addition to this, we have a, a number of really kind of exciting concurrent projects running. Um, firstly, with University of Edinburgh, we're looking at gene editing and how we can use that to improve yields of, of phycocyanin uh, and also improve the stability of the, of the product we're making. Um, another interesting product with University College London is we're performing full life cycle analysis on our processing chains to identify more sustainable approaches that we can incorporate and more sustainable ingredients, buffers, for example. And uh, also we have a K another KTP associate joining um, later on this year with Strathclyde University, who will be aiming to incorporate better monitoring and modeling approaches that can help us optimize the, the culturing and the, the uh, and the harvesting steps of, of, of manufacture. Next slide, please. So now the, for the, the more interesting bit, I'm going to sort of introduce you to our, our product portfolio. So as I mentioned, Scott Bio Blue is our core product. Um, and, and to date, most of the work we've been doing as a company has been focused on bringing this product to market. So Scott Bio Blue is, is phycocyanin. It's an intensely blue colored protein, um, which we produce at both food and reagent grade uh, currently. Um, it has a, a real impressive list of, of bioactive credentials. It's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and has also been anti-cancer activities that, um, reported in, in literature. Also, these molecules are really fluorescent and it makes them ideal candidates uh, in, for fluorescent probes in, in immunological assays and, and various other uses. So this is therefore a fairly lucrative market for us to tapping into this reagent and pharma grade CPC. Although we're finding that there's a big increasing consumer demand for, for natural food colorants and dyes. So the, the food and beverage market is, is currently our, 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 our main market. Next slide, please. So, so my work, uh, however, has been focused on, on the other bioactive molecules in spirulina and uh, their commercial application. So spirulina is really this fantastic color box. It uh, has green, blue, red, and yellow components, which therefore gives us massive potential to make virtually every color under the rainbow. Of, of key interest to me are beta carotene, zeaxanthin, and chlorophyll. Um, again, these molecules have various health promoting qualities, antioxidant, anti-cancer, low, lower blood pressure, um, and they're regularly formulated into nutraceuticals and food additives and pharmaceuticals as well. So I've been working on developing green food safe methods for extracting and purifying these molecules, um, which we're just in the process of upscaling at the moment. Next slide, please. So, in my opinion, our most exciting product that, uh, is our vegan protein. So we produce um, both either a pink or a decolorized protein with the very neutral organoleptic qualities, uh, but with a, um, a complete amino acid profile and various other good functional properties that, that food multinationals are looking for in these vegan protein replacements. And resultantly, we've seen we've seen a lot of commercial interest for this for this commodity. Um, and we personally see massive in, uh, application for it in, in sports nutrition and in, in fake meat products as well, some of which really need other alternate vegan proteins to, to boost their, their, their nutritional qualities in particular. And we're also working on ways of further extracting some of the proteins in, in this and, and assessing their application for, for personalized nutritional formulas, et cetera. Next slide, please. Um, very excitingly, we've recently been given funding for two projects with Medical Research Scotland and iBioIC, um, looking at the application of some of the spirulina components as antivirals. So these components have previously been shown about 10, 15 years ago to have considerable activity against uh, via human viruses such as HIV, herpes, uh, influenza. And the aim of these two projects will be to, to explore the, the activity against emerging human viruses such as SARS coronavirus 2 um, and other emerging viruses as well by firstly identifying their, their antiviral mechanisms um, and we also want to explore the, the application of producing antivirals from spirulina and other cyanobacteria as well. Um, we see the potential use as broad acting uh, prophylactics, topical creams, um, various uses so it's really kind of quite, ex some quite exciting new research for us so, so watch this space. Um, and then next slide, please. 
so sort of finally just where we're heading as a company in the next few years we we need to aim to scale up production of these co-products in particular um we also those you know want to identify new um bioactive as well from spirulina and other microbial strains um, and we're keen to work with new partners particularly to explore new disruptive technologies that we could be could be deployed in the microarrival biorefinery um, and other collaborators to help us explore the, the functionality and bioactivity of some of these co-products further. Um, on a final note, we hope that by generating new data and developing this new photobioreactive technology and overcoming some of the, the barriers um, that have proved um, problematic to microalgal cultivation, we can help microalgal products become a, a mainstay commodity used by food and farmer industries which will in turn promote growth across the whole of the, the, the IV sector as well. Final slide. So thank you very much for listening. Um, please drop me an email if, you, if you're interested in the work we're doing or you think there's scope for the collaboration and just a bit of shameless sort of self-promotion. Um, if you're interested further, we've got um, a published book chapter and journal out uh, later this month and, and, and this year as well if you want to read more. Um, and I think that's everything. So I'll hand you back to the chair.